even the joy of Jesus on this morning. Truly, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me. Oh, honor and glory to my Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, the love of my soul. Hallelujah, for he is worthy to be praised to our pastor and first lady. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They're not here right now, but they're on the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's on the way. Hallelujah, truly he's worthy to be praised. So we give honor to the minister, Mr. Stalin, to our St. Philip Church family in the house and online. Hallelujah. As I stand, would you turn with me to the book of Luke? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Verse, I'm going to start with verse 43. Luke chapter 8. New chapter 8, sorry. New chapter 8, verse 43. Let's see, I'm going to stop at 48. Yes, I'm going to stop at 48. Amen, amen. That's Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 48. And it reads, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stained. Stop. Immediately. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter, and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and said thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him, before all the people, for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. 48, and he said unto her, Dora, be of good courage, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. Verse 48 again, and he said unto her, Dora, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. From the scripture that was read in your hearing. Hallelujah. I want to use a, a subject. Just a touch. Just a touch. And then I want you to turn to somebody and ask them a question. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Amen. Just a touch. Do you want to be made whole? Amen. That's a question for all of us. Now, before I get to verse our, our text that I read, verse um, forty-three, beginning at that um, scripture, I'm just going to go and just highlight a couple of verses before that just to kind of set the scene set the tone so we'll know where we are amen. where we are in this scripture amen so I'm going to start actually at verse let's see I'm going to go to 40 I'm going to go to 40 and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned and the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him and behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come 
into his house. Verse 42. For he had one, had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying, but as he went, the people thrown him. Now from that, that, that reading, um, we can gather that when it says a Jairus was a synagogue leader, that means that he had status. He had status. So when he came, you know, he fell at Jesus' feet. He humbled himself. When it says he, he fell at his feet, that's how we are to approach God. Humble. Amen. Not puffed up. He had a, a title and a position, but he was still humble at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to get to our text now, which is verse 43. Amen. Amen. And it says, any woman have an issue of blood, 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. It was stopped immediately. Amen. Now, when we think of this scripture, this text, a lot of times we can relate women because of the issue of blood. Right. Because we understand that we, many of us have that issue. So it's a physical thing. And I can tell you that up until probably a couple weeks ago, that was how I related. Only the physical uh -huh. issue that was stopped. Right. But God began to speak to me and let me know that it's not just physical. How many are walking around with issues? For 12 long years. Right, Not physical issues. Issues in our spirit. Right. Issues in our mind. Amen. Issues in our family. Amen. Hallelujah. Issues in the church. Amen. Local and universal. All right. Many of us have walked around with issues. And because it wasn't a physical sign. Mm -hmm. right. Because it wasn't a physical sign. Guess what? That that the intensity of it continues to grow. Amen. I want you to think about it this way. Um, we, we just got over the breast cancer, uh, you know, just acknowledging breast cancer awareness month. Now, they always encourage us to go and get your screened. Make sure you're on time. Because the longer sometimes you wait, it can spread, it can cause more damage. So think about those issues that we have and we've carried around where nobody can see how that has grown. What was on the inside now is revealing itself on the outside. All right, all right. It's revealing itself on the outside. A lot of times when we think of the scars and stuff that we have, it's a scaffold. Just protect it. But on the inside of it, it's the healing. Amen. So it can't go both ways. God gives us that protection that we need. But a lot of times we don't acknowledge the problem to him. Amen. When we don't acknowledge our need, our struggles, we're not really asking for his help. When he said, seek, ye shall find. Not and the door shall be open. That's exactly what it means. It's already ordained for us. Our path is already set. But he needs us to participate. Amen. And by participate, participating is giving God our yes. Amen. Giving God our yes. So like I said, a lot of us walk around with those inner, that inner sickness. Those, those illnesses and things that have plagued our minds, hearts, and family for years. But it's not until we get to a desperate point, like this woman with the issue of blood, where she didn't care. I don't care the crowd. I don't care who looking. I don't care what. I'm going to press my way through. I don't care what others may think, because you got to think about it. And those times, 
know, that issue of blood, that, she was kept in isolation. So you got to think, she actually risked being um, talked about. Uh -huh. Because when you're in isolation, the people that kind of keeps your mind in isolation, they want to keep you there. That's right. They want to keep you there, right there, where they can control. Because they understand that if you get a healing, guess what? That's, you're going up. You're not going down. So if you if they can get us to stay down and not press through. See, when you're going down, you're going straight down. When you're pressing through, you're going forward. You are going forward. And she didn't care. How many of us are at this point, and to be honest, that it is something going on in our lives, our families, that you know what, God, if you don't come in right now, if you don't step in right now, I don't know how this is going to end. So God, right now, you know what? I'm going to press through. I don't care what nobody else thinks. I don't care what they look at. I don't care what's in their mind. I don't care if they're formulating their own ideas about what I'm going through. I'm not worried about that. What I'm, what I'm focused on is getting to you. I don't care if I have to crawl to get to you. Guess what? That's all it took. Yeah. Just like that, her participation. Yeah. Her focus on God. Not distracted by anything else. That's right. Distractions is, is the enemy's way. I mean, he uses all kinds of distractions Amen. to keep us from getting to where God wants us to be. That's right. We have to be so careful. We have to be so careful of the distractions because a lot of times it's things that's close to us. That can distract us. Amen. It's those things that um, tug at our heart so much can actually distract us. Because if God is saying, I want you to go, just come to me. Uh -huh. He wants me to keep going in the prayers. Right. But somebody over here said, Keisha, you know, I, I you know, I'm having trouble. I need for you to do this for me. Um, you know, I, I had this, but I went and did something and this and that. Listen, by the time I get through listening to all that, guess what done happened? I done got distracted. And it's not, and guess what? The scenario I use is truly me. Because I like to help. And usually when I help, I done got all the way off track for what God has for me. And we can be honest, those distractions are things the enemy and I will use anything that don't concern us. He don't use those things that's precious to us. That he know we'd love to do. Amen. To get us off track. Amen. So when I'm supposed to be pressing forward. Guess what? I don't want to decide. All right. Because by the time I listen. And then I go over there. And then I see if I need help. I don't call some more people. <laughs> Watch out, man. That's it. I don't call some more people. I don't got all the way off track now. That's right. I don't took the focus all the way off of him. Yeah. But guess what? All I had to do was continue pressing forward. Amen. And right. it's nothing wrong saying, you know what? I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray about it. Um, and God's going to work this out. He's going to lead us where we need to go. That's, right. That's all I needed to say. And, so, and guess what? Keep pressing forward. And I can guarantee by the time I got to him, those prayers will already be answered. Because it was already in place. Amen. I didn't need to keep my focus on what God said. I think about it this way. That's God business. Get out of his business. I tell myself that every day. Can you get out of his business? That's not yours. You can't fix nothing. All you can do is create a greater mess. And be honest. We done got all sidetracked. We done brought people in that God didn't even want to come in. We have to be careful. Of the distractions. And if you like me, listen, I write notes and everything that's God's business. Don't do that. Don't put your mouth on. Don't give it too much in your ear. Let God be God. Amen. Let God be God. Amen. Amen. Now we're down to, I'm going to read uh, 45 again, y'all. And then we're going to go on down. And Jesus said, Who touched me when all denied Peter and they that went? were with him said, Master, 
The multitude from thee who pressed thee and said thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody have touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. It was a crowd of people, y'all. A crowd. But in that crowd, it was that one. Just one. That pressed through for just that one touch. She understood that if I can just touch. <laughs> it is not about the human, the garment. It's actually the one that's wearing the garment. That's where the power is. That's where the true power is. So we don't need to get sidetracked. So a lot of times we, we put our focus on him. No, it's one way in it. It's the power that resides in the one that is wearing it. It's the, the power that resides and it's her desire to press through no matter what else is going on that allowed her to receive her miracle uh -huh. that was already in place, but she had to participate in it. Right. How many of us know that God uses us? Amen. We're his agents. We are his agents. My eyes belong to him, my ears belong to him. Even my nose, my lips, these hands, and my feet right. belong to him. Amen. And just like it belong, mine belong to him, so does yours. Amen. All he wants us to do is give it to him. He, he don't force nobody. He's not going to force us. A lot of times, you know, he keep coming for us until we finally just give in and say, God, I'm done. I accept your will. I accept your way. Now, when she came and she pressed you, now she didn't know if, no, I'm going to take that back. She did know that if she could just make her way, healing was going to take place. She did know. You know how? She had faith. Amen. It's not the garment. It's really not. It's her faith in God right. that made her whole. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. <laughs> not tomorrow faith. Not in an hour faith. Not another second, another minute faith. But now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. She didn't know, but guess what? I trust you, God. I don't know. But I done tried everything else for 12 long years. I done lost all my money. I've been in isolation. And I still got this condition that I can't shake. So God, guess what? I'm pressing my way through. I'm going to press my way through. Trusting and believing that what you said is what's going to happen. See, it's in the press. It's in the going forward, yeah. not going back. If I could just press, yeah. press in his presence. Y'all heard that song? Yeah. If I could just press, yeah. press in his presence. That said now faith. That said now faith. Amen. Now we're going to go on to um, verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what called she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Immediately she was healed. Now in my mind, immediately. God is doing things in this season, y'all, quickly. When I say a quick turn around, I mean quickly. He ain't playing. And a lot of times before you ask it, you're, it's in your head. You ain't even spoke it. And you look around and it's already there. Amen. How many of you have, have experienced that? Raise your hand because I'm telling you. Oh my God, I didn't even get a chance to ask you. You say, you know what? You're mine. Your brain, but I know your thoughts. I know. So guess what? You didn't even have to voice it for me to give you the answer that I had already prepared for you. So when it said it's already done, it 
it's already done. He waited for us to get there. Amen. It's already done. When we can get that concept, yeah. our life will be so much smoother. And I'm just talking about me. When I can get that concept, I can get out of the way and allow God to direct my path. Yeah. Every day, in every situation, yeah. even when a situation don't look like you know, it's dead. It don't look like it coming to life. It, I'm going to be honest. It really don't. Everything in my vision saying it's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. It's not going to happen. But with God, yeah. all things are possible. Yeah. All things are possible yeah. when we keep our focus on Him. Right. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not Unto thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall. Not he might, not he gonna think about it, but he shall direct thy path. That's a mighty good God. That's a mighty good God. That all I have to do is surrender to him, and I can get up and he'll just direct my path. He'll tell me what to put on. He'll tell me what to say. He'll tell me. He gets you prepared for what you are, what you really don't even know coming. Yeah. I mean, example. God will pour in what you need before you get to that situation Amen. or that time. Amen. And then when it happens, you'd be like, God, really? Did you really have to set me up? Did you really have to set me up? Did you really have to set me up? He said, yes, ma'am, I did. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yeah. Because I need for you to be in place. Right. Yeah. I need for you to be where you need to be so those connected to you that I've already assigned for you to be a blessing to so they can get in place. Yeah. God will wreck our whole life that we have already outlined for ourselves yeah. to get us to where we need to be. Amen. And guess what? It's not about us. Right. It's about the others. Amen. It's really about the multitude. Amen. Amen. And what we're going to do with that one, we are. Um, let, uh, let's go to Luke chapter 1. I'm just going to give you an example of when Mary, when she Actually, he said, you know, not thy will, Lord, but what thy will be done. Thy will be done. God, I know I'm going to be talked about, criticized. How am I pregnant and I don't know a man? Have never known a man. But regardless of that, I'll still give you my yes. I will still give you my yes. And I'm going to read verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those, in those days and went unto the hill, con hill country with haste into a, a city of Judea and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that, uh, that uh, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I want to look at verse 41 again. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in a womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't until Mary spoke the salutation. It wasn't until Mary accepted what God had for her. And when she came into the presence of Elizabeth, the babe leaped in a womb. The babe leaped in a womb. The babe leaped in a womb. See, I want to have a, a close relationship with God that's so close that what God has inside of me that when I come in contact with my 
sister, what's inside of her is going to leap forward. It's going to leap forward. That's how God works. It's not about me and what I carry. But it's what I can, what is inside of me that can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. So when I walk and when I talk every day of my life, when I come in contact with someone else, I want what's inside of them to stir and leap forward. That shows us that God has a mighty sweet plan Amen. for all of us. Jesus had to go through the death, the burying, the resurrection to, to be stretched out with all power. So if, if he had to go through that, so that we, so that me, you, 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 so that all of us would be able to have a right to the tree of life. Amen. That's a mighty good God. Amen. Think about what he went through just for us. We have to be careful that we don't get so focused on us. And I'm talking to me that we forget the big picture. Because there is a big picture. Right now you may look at that small window saying, God, I don't know how it's gonna work. But then when it works out, you really get a clear view of what God had already planned and ordained for all of us, for all of us. And we're gonna go back now, y'all, just want to highlight that. We're gonna go back to verse 48. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good her, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. Now, I, I've been studying, and, and I'm telling you, um, when we first start out, this woman started out with as being described as the woman with the issue of blood. That's all we know. The one with the issue of blood. But in verse 48, Jesus flips the script a little bit. He says, and he said unto her, daughter, 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 be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. So she went from being just a woman with the issue of blood to daughter. How many of us know that when, when you're somebody's daughter, you have a close relationship? Right. He cares about us. Amen. So she went from the woman with the issue of blood, which was painful, physically, emotionally, mentally, to daughter, that faith had made the whole go in peace. I want you to say it again, ask that neighbor, do you want to be made whole today? Do you want to be made whole today? Do you want to be made whole today? Amen, amen. We have to do, just like this woman with the issue of blood, we have to press. I don't care if you got to get that crawling. Press is in the press. And in the press, God knows that, you know, this, this daughter, she believes in me. She ain't just pressing for something she don't believe in. She's pressing because she understands that what I have for her is greater than her present situation. Amen. What I have for her is a purpose that I have already ordained for her. But it's in our press, it's in our press that God allows what he has already ordained for us to be revealed. So if we don't press, and we don't trust God, if we don't study his word, if we don't stand on the faith, that now faith, how can we make it to what God has for us? And for all of that, we have to study God's word. You can't speak anything and just, because sometimes you're not going to have a chance to get a Bible. So it's got to be something on the inside of you that's going to come out. You heard them say, you know, what's in you going to get you to come out? It will. Good and bad. It will. If you don't have 
something in you at that point, what you do or what you say can not only harm you, but it can also cause harm to those around you. Stay in the Word. Don't just read it. Ask God to give you that knowledge. You know, you. I want to get a deeper understanding Amen. of your Word. And He will do it. Amen. He will do it. I, I'm a witness that He will actually point out things that I have read the Scripture for years and caught myself studying it. But for the last couple of weeks, it, He's been blowing my mind. Because I took time. I took time. And not just me. I had people surrounding me that pours into me, that prays for me, that won't let me give up. They know the yearning I have for God's word, to want to walk in this way. So guess what? People are going to pour into you. And a lot of times you don't even have to open your mouth. Where did this come from? I, I'm, I'm a witness, y'all. And I know, look, I hear the eight-man corner over here. That's it. You don't have to voice anything. And before you know it, whatever you're concerned about, whatever the need is, it's already there. It's already there. It is already there. Now, as I, we went over our text, but I do want to highlight just a couple more scriptures, y'all. Just a couple more. Now, when Jesus first started out, he was on his way to heal Jairus' door. She was sick. She was sick. Now, he stopped. He was on a path for Jairus' daughter, who was a son of God leader, who had status. But in the middle of going for Jairus' daughter to this man that had status, he stopped for a woman that to everybody else had no status. That everyone else always seen her issues, her problems. But in the middle of him going for Jairus' daughter, oh. Jesus flipped the script and he said, you know what? I am not a respected person. Your title and your position does not hold the power. The power is in me. So he that lets us know that status we want to have education, we want to have tight, all of this. But when it comes to God and His plan, don't worry about what society thinks. Don't worry about what society has labeled you as. Don't worry about the short comments because Jesus showed us in this example that I'm just as important as the President of the United States. You're just as important as a governor, anybody else you can think of with high status, we are just as important as they are in his sight. So what God did, he stopped. She got a healing, but guess what? He had to continue on Amen. with the journey to Jairus' daughter. And it says, I'm going to read verse 49, y'all. While he had spake, there came one of the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Amen. Now, on the way, Jesus was headed to his daughters because she was sick. But in the middle of him taking the time out with the one with the issue of blood, a messenger came to let them know that she's dead now. She's dead. So you can imagine, you know, what, what the other people were saying. What they were saying. Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. In other words, the time has passed. You know, she's dead. We ain't going to worry about it. She dead. Don't you trouble them about it. Yeah. How many of us have been in situations where people have just, you know, we already gone through something. Mm -hmm. And it gets dying. Yeah. And when you have other people involved in it, mm -hmm. sometimes it can make it even worse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Because I'm trying to hold on to the faith that God, you know what, if 
if I, you know, I know the situation look like it cannot come up. I know it, I know y'all saying she dead, but you know what? You know, I, sometimes we need people that even in our dead situation will speak life to it. Even in our dead situation, they will speak life to it. I don't care what I, I think about the skit that Mr. Stalin did. I don't care what the doctor said. I trust the report of the Lord. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do, but that that what that diagnosis that the doctor gave me, it don't stop nothing. It does not stop God's healing power. Amen. I don't care if you're trying to get a house and your credit score is 450. Y'all know that love. 450. 450. Guess what? God will work a miracle so fast. Because you know what it is? It's for his glory. God will do exactly what he said he's going to do. For his glory. So those who are that around you that knew, you know what? I was credit so 450. In the worst you get a house. Get up, Jesus. 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 You want to die that way? Jesus. That's how he works. For his glory. You worry about all this other stuff. Jesus. That's what did it for me. This is just a little side note. Be careful who got your ears. Amen. Be careful Amen. who has your ears. Because those that got your ears, if they're not connected to God, let me tell you something. You're in all sidetrack. Now, God done told you to go to this, per this place, fill out the long paper. Those are his instructions. Amen. But when you, they say, you know, you know, four fifth of that probably will work. I know somebody else. You know, go over there and you know, put in a couple, you know, applications at different places. Amen. God ain't told you nothing about go to no different places. Amen. He didn't tell me to go to a different place. He gave me direction. Follow the direction. Follow the, the direction to the T. If he said it, that's him. I'm gonna walk in. Because he don't care nothing about no credit score. He owns everything. He owns everything. I'm a king's kid. You know what, King? I'm going to tell you something. When I look at the TV and all these different things, when the kids are the kings, you know, the pals and all that, whew, you know, they, they go and all that food laid out on the long table, and, you know, they get somebody to drive them everywhere, and they got somebody to clean the house and all of that. But my God, my king, he owes everything. Clean the table, the cars, and drop everything. So that is the God that we serve. Be careful who has your ear. 51, and when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden, and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, "Weep not; she is not dead, but sleeping." Fifty-one is just what I just told you. Be careful who has your ear. When Jesus went in, he took Peter, James, and John. Why y'all think that? That's it. You cannot have people in your inner circle when you're going through these storms of life. And I'm going to tell you how it was given to me. Do you know who your Peter, James, and John are? Can you right now, can you write down who your Peter, James, and John are in your life? Those are the ones that even when it look bad, they're going to encourage you. Those are the ones that when you call them, they're not going to give you a long list about how you got in that situation. They're not going to do that. What they're going to do is encourage you through the word of God. Now, they're not going to pacify your feelings. They're going to give you encouraging. They're, you know, they're going to give you directions. And they're going to give it in love. We need that. We need 
be those that's connected to us, that loves us enough to tell us the truth and to help guide us yes. in the way that God has for us. Amen. At that point, we don't need nobody in our ear talking negative. Right. And they can come all kind of ways. They'll come to you directly, they'll go through some of your family members. We have to be careful, even some of the music, we have to be careful, the TV programs, all of this stuff. Amen. If you're already down and a movie comes on and, and it's all over the place, mm -hmm. guess what happens? It brings your spirit on down. You're already in a, a dark place and now you're gonna watch something that's negative or got all kinds of stuff going on that's not uplifting God before you know it. You're in a darker place than what you were before you start watching that show. We have to be careful who we are connected to. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to actually go to, we'll close out with John chapter 11. That's the story of Lazarus. He raised from the dead. Amen. And we're going to close right there. So with the woman with the issue of blood, it was one touch. It was one touch. Now with Lazarus, we're going to look at chapter 11. And I am going to read um, verse 11. And I'm going to kind of skip, skip around a little bit. It says, These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I, might, I may awake him out of sleep. Then said the, his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it? Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. So verse 14, then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. That's our faith. When God does what he does, he actually specializes in their situations yes, for his glory. Amen. So it's nothing that any of us is going through right now uh -huh. that God can't turn around Amen. with just one touch, Amen. with just a word. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to turn and go to verse 40. No, verse 39. So it's John 11, 39. And it reads, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou but wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of, the God, of God. For the glory of God. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And 43, and that's the end, y'all. And when he thus have spoken, he cried with a loud voice, let us come forth. Amen. 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, with gray clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. 
Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. God is not concerned or move about our dead situation. Four days. Four days, Elijah was dead. Four days. Four hours. My mind, that's a hard concept for me. But four days now. And God was not concerned for his glory. For his glory. Verse 44. He came for a bound, hand and foot, with great clothes. God don't care what we got on. It does not stop his power. He don't care what our own mind frame, our own self-worth have put. Sometimes we cloak ourselves and cover ourselves with what society has said. They label us as a, you know, you're a one-parent home. You're a divorce. You're an alcoholic. You're a drug addict. Mm -mm. That's not what my God said. We actually walk around all the time with clothes that we have let others, even ourselves, put on ourselves that goes against what God says Amen. in his word. Amen. We have to be careful what we let bound us up because I want to be free. I don't know about nobody else, but I want to be free. So when he said, lose him and let him go, I took that as a personal note for Keisha that God, I don't care what the situation looks like. I don't care what other people are saying about it. Lose him and let him go. So guess what? Keisha is loose today. Keisha is loose today. And I encourage all of us, no matter what you came in here today for, bound up, tied up in your grave clothes that we are put on ourselves and allow society and others to put on us. God don't care nothing about how long it's been. Look at the one with the issue of blood 12 long years. Look at Lazarus, four days. God does not care how long we've been in the situation. He gave that one touch. She pressed that one touch. Lazarus. Come forth. Lazarus, come forth. That's a demand. Lazarus, come forth. So guess what? I'm just... The scripture says greater works that I can do. So if Jesus can say, Lazarus will come forth and he came forth, guess what Keisha can say? Come forth. Amen. House, come forth. Amen. Money, come forth. Amen. Peace of mind, come forth. Amen. Come forth. If any of us have anything that we were bound up in today, all we have to do come is come forth. Because guess what? God is right there. Yeah. Right. Our words have power. We, a lot of us don't really use the power. But our words have power. They can be negative. They can be positive. But I would rather stand on the word of God. Where it says, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. That lets me know that no matter how bad the situation all I got to say is come forth. Trusting and believing that if God said it, that settled it. God said it, and that settles it. God said it, and that settles it. But first we have to seek his face. We have to press in like the woman with the issue of blood. He is not going to force himself on anybody. He's not going to force her to accept his will, his way. He's just that, he's just a gentleman like that. He's not going to force anything. All he is waiting for is the imitation. The imitation. God, I'm ready. I tried to do it my way for so long. But God, I'm ready now. Just like that woman with the issue of blood. 12 long years. She had tried everything else. <laughs> but Lord have mercy. 
Jesus. He's the answer. He was the answer for her, and he's the answer for all of us. He is the answer for all of us. So no matter what the situation is, no matter what it looks like, we can stand on the promises of God. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And guess what? We can stand on this word. Every day of our life. We can trust that what God said, it shall come to pass. Amen. All he needs is our feet. Amen. Our feet. We got to keep walking forward, child. He wants us to surrender all to him. All that I talked about, the healing power, all came when we it comes forth when we have that relationship with God. That's where it starts. That relationship with God is where it starts. As we sing, hallelujah. As we sing.